Electricast. There's a change happening in the way we live, the way we work, the way we spend our money and make our decisions. We are evolving to be more conscious in our actions in a way that serves the world and makes it a better place. Welcome to The Ethical Evolution. The Ethical Evolution podcast is brought to you by Ethical Change Agency. I'm Bindi, I'm the founder, and my mission is to help ethical entrepreneurs and holistic healers to find their voice through spiritual coaching and podcasting. I'm honoured to bring you the stories of those who create change through healing, kindness, innovation, purpose, and spirit. Understanding that to create collective change, we need to be the change. It all begins with us. Kavita Guy is the co-founder and CEO of Nectar, a cutting-edge edtech company based in Los Angeles that is building the future of learning. Kavita founded Nectar in 2018 as an undergrad at UC Santa Barbara and has since raised over $2.25 million to reinvent the way we learn on a global scale. Her goal is to finally update the 400-year-old model of the classroom that we all still use today. Nectar brings an entire campus online in seconds with purpose-built communication infrastructure for any school made by students, parents and teachers who care about building the classroom of the future. I found hanging out with Kavita very inspiring to see a future rolling out with a change that has the potential to impact the world. Welcome Kavita to the Ethical Evolution. Thanks for having me, Mindy. Excited to be here. Now, I'm excited to have you here as well. Now, you're coming to us all the way from LA. Um, yes. Can you tell us who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So for the listeners, my name is Kavita Guy. I am the co-founder and CEO at Nectar. Nectar is basically, you can think of Slack for schools. So it is a virtual courtyard where every single person on a campus, the students, the faculty, and the staff all have a place to communicate. I built Nectar when I was an undergrad student myself at UC Santa Barbara here in California, and it was born out of my frustration with school. I felt like if I'm paying $40,000 for higher education, I should probably get an education that I can't go find on Google or YouTube. Mm. And I realized very quickly in college that the only reason I really wanted to stick around and the thing stopping me from dropping out were the people around me. Mm. The communities that I had joined, the organizations that I was a part of, you come for the education, but you stay for the people. Mm. And I learned so much from the communities that I was in. I felt like if there was a way for us to access all of the communities that we're a part of when we're on campus, that is the best way for us to push towards the next evolution of education. I think especially in the light of AI and all of the technological developments we've seen, It's really time for us to put community and humanity back at the center of education. And Mm. that's what we're trying to do with Nectar. Mm. It starts with just a group chat in every single class where students can answer each other's questions, teachers get some of the load taken off of them, and you build this community at the center of the classroom where everybody becomes a learning resource for one another. And that's the whole premise of it. Yeah, and I, and I guess it's the same with I guess even like in a workplace or or even you know in a school like exactly. when you share your experience that's how other people learn um, mm-hmm. and you know doing it in a group setting it makes it so much easier to to grasp as well um, totally so I mean how did you come up with this idea Yeah, it's um it's a story I love to tell basically. When I first came to college in 2015, I came in as a first-generation student, only child. So my idea of what American education was going to look like was just from the movies. And I learned very quickly that college is not the way it's portrayed in the movies. I thought it was going to be these, you know, small, intimate classrooms where I'm building relationships with these experts who are teaching me topics that they love, that they're making me fall in love with. And you get a little bit of that if you can find the right classes sometimes. But my very first class was 500 people. Mm. And I felt like I was drowning. Wow. And I didn't actually know this until after college, but I'm autistic and I have ADHD. And so I have never felt like any classroom 
in the history of my education was ever built for me to thrive in. It felt like it was actively working against me at all times. Mm. And I honestly felt dumb. I felt like I just wasn't smart. And that is a really tough feeling to grow up with. And so when I came to college, I honestly wasn't expecting to feel any different in the classroom. But for the amount of money I was spending, I definitely did expect more out of it. And don't get me wrong, UCSB was an incredible school and I love it and I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. But class for me basically came down to going on day one, picking up the syllabus and not going to a single lecture, just self-studying in between and then showing up to the midterm and final and figuring it out myself because that was the way that I could sort of get the best education for myself. I could plan out when I wanted to absorb the material and how. And I didn't love that method, but it was just what worked best for me and for honestly a lot of other students around me. Mm -hmm. And the only time I really had my idea of education change at all in my life was a class that I happened to stumble upon the summer between my sophomore and junior year in college. And since it was over summer, it was taught by a grad student on campus And it was theories of communication. I still remember that class. And this is Santa Barbara. I mean, you can see the beach from the classroom. So class over summer was the last place that Mm. any of us wanted to be. But I go on day one expecting to do my normal routine of, you know, pick up the syllabus and then not go to another lecture the whole summer. But our instructor, Spencer, the grad student, he had a little bit of a different idea. He sat us down on day one and he said, look, it's summer. I know you don't want to be here and I don't want to be here either. So let's try to make this class not as bad as the rest of them. And he, you know, turns on an oil diffuser and he put on a (laughs) Spotify playlist of Bossa Nova. He was really trying to get us to not drop that class. And then he turned around and he wrote the link to a Slack workspace on the board. And for those who don't know, Slack is an enterprise tool that's used for chatting. It's instant messaging that you can use amongst big teams. And I had seen it, you know, at internships and orgs that I was in, but never seen anyone use it in the classroom before. Mm. And he said, I'm going to ask you to never raise your hand. No asking any questions in class. Don't come talk to me or your TA. If you have any issues with class, you can't figure out the homework, you don't know what the slide that I just talked about said, your first line of action is going to be to go to this group chat with everyone else in class and put your question there. Because I guarantee that one of the 149 people around you will have a better and faster answer for you than me or your TA will. And on top of that, if you answer someone's question really well, I'll give you extra credit for it. Because that lets me know that you understand the topic that I just taught you so well that you can then go teach one of your peers. And that is the highest level of mastery that you can achieve. That is how I will know that you guys are learning the material I'm teaching you. And if you can't answer each other's questions, then I know I'm not doing a good job at teaching you. And I'll adjust my next lecture accordingly. And immediately, and this is, he had just explained it. We hadn't even gotten into it yet but you felt the energy in the room shift. Mm -hmm. Everybody felt like Spencer had just metaphorically turned the chairs inwards. So we were now allowed, given permission for the first time, to access this community that is in every classroom, but that we don't have, we just never really had a good way of accessing it. It's impossible for everyone to raise their hand and talk at the same time. But when you have a group chat, and you're actually allowed to use it in class, after class, however you need to, it becomes the lifeline of the classroom. And that's exactly what it was for us. The whole summer became centered around this group chat in class. It would be, you know, us in the middle of lecture explaining a concept to each other in case Spencer hadn't fully gone through it. And then he would notice after class and say, oh, I'll make sure I touch on that again next time. But it was also us two in the morning saying, Hey, I know the midterm is tomorrow. Is anyone in the library? You guys want to study together? Mm. 30 of us going to the same part of the library at two in the morning and studying for the midterm. And I had just never experienced education like this, where it was felt like tailor-made to what I needed and what everyone else needed too. 
And I didn't feel like I was drowning. Like I was this invisible person in the back who was just struggling to get through. I was part of this community that noticed if I didn't come to class. And so for the first time in college, I went to every single lecture because I loved that class so much. Mm. And I unsurprisingly got the highest grade that I got ever in college. And I'm pretty sure so did a lot of other students in that class. And we're still friends with each other today because Mm. we built such incredible bonds. And more importantly, I still remember every single theory that I learned in that class. It really, uh, something just stuck with me. And I left that class like a dog with a bone. I was like, if I and 27,000 other people at this school are paying you $40,000 a year, why can you not put technology like this in every single classroom? Mm. I just don't understand. It would completely change the way that we learn and the way that we teach. And I approached the school. I approached UCSB. I wanted somebody to answer that question for me. And I got the runaround. No one even knew who would be the right person to answer that. Finally ended up in an office called Instructional Design. And they described themselves as teaching teachers how to teach. (laughs) So they basically procure all the new tools for the campus and figure out how to design the courses. And they were kind enough to sit me down and walk me through the logistical hell of putting a separate enterprise-level workspace in 1,500 classes every quarter, teaching professors how to use it, making sure that they had it set up for their students correctly, paying for every single student to use those tools. They basically said, it sounds nice in theory, but this is never going to work. No university is going to be able to do this at scale. And I left that meeting as a junior at the time thinking... I hear what you're saying, but I cannot ever do class differently ever again. Mm -hmm. That was the most incredible experience I've had. And I know for the first time in my life that this is the best solution to truly change the world. I think education is the precursor to every major innovation we've ever had in history. Mm -hmm. You don't do it without learning first. And if we can finally update this 400-year-old model of teaching that we still use today we can change the world. And I saw the light at the end of the tunnel and I just wasn't going to let it go. So I said, fine, if nobody's built this and it's just some round peg in a square hole that we're trying to fit right now, I'll go build the education version of this. Mm -hmm. And my, one of my best friends at the time was in the same boat of wanting to drop out and teach himself coding and sort of go the, you know, entrepreneur route out of college. And He said, why don't we do this? Why don't we build this? Why don't we finally stop complaining about school and see if we can actually do something to change it? So we spent the next two years trying to do the impossible that they said they couldn't do. We tried to put a community, a group chat, in every single class on our campus. And in 2020, we achieved it. We built Nectar and got all 27,000 students at our campus using it in almost every single class that was offered, with the instructors being the champions of it. Mm. And on top of that, we got UCSB to pay us a license for it. So we got our tuition back, which was great. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. And once we saw how incredible the effect was across this campus, how it truly changed learning, we said we have to go do this at every single school in the world. Mm. Everybody deserves access to a valuable education that is modern, updated, and accessible to them. And that's what Nectar does. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. There's so much to unpack in in what you just said (laughs) as well. Um, And I'm just going to track back a little. So, you know, you were talking about um, that first class that you went into and there's 500 students in it. Like that in itself is mind-blowing for, you know, Someone like me, who's who's from you know, small town country Queensland, um, mm-hmm. where an entire school is only four hundred people. Um, yeah. You know, my high school was only four hundred students, um, wow. whereas my class in I think it was grade grade seven, which was primary school here, mm-hmm. um, I think there was a maximum of fifteen students. Like wow. So for me, that's like. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, yeah. if one class has got five hundred students in it. Like it's overwhelming, absolutely overwhelming. Totally. Absolutely. Um, and then you know uh, the different ways people learn. 
So what what you're doing here is you're catering for that ability for people to retain information visually and, you know, in different ways. And exactly. that connection and community is there. So that's why you've built those relationships and you've got the bond of trust because right. the student becomes the teacher. Exactly. And like I have to share a story with you Um uh, in my, I also work for the state government here, and um, oh, amazing! Um, I, I work in digital, and um, okay. <laughs> when COVID hit here, mm. we had to very quickly work from home. Um, right. And at that point, we weren't at an enterprise level set up to do that. We were mm-hmm. we were heading towards it, but COVID mm-hmm. pushed us really fast. So yeah. we'd only just got laptops for every mm. um, employee months mm-hmm. before COVID hit. Wow. Um, so I was like, how, how are we going to keep everyone connected? How are we going to keep everyone accountable? Um, right. so I set up a Slack, um, that Amazing. afternoon, taught the team how to use it. It's, it's pretty intuitive, right? Yeah, so, totally. um, and what it did, we were all working from home, team of about 10 people, um, mm-hmm. all working from home in different locations and everyone was using that to connect, communicate and collaborate. Mm-hmm. Um, right. it even though we weren't sitting next to each other, it brought us closer together. We, we became like family through a time when most people were losing connection. That's and incredible. just to do that, to bring people together, it then made our transition to enterprise using Teams far mm-hmm. easier because they'd already been there, right? They already Absolutely. knew what to do. Exactly. So we became the pioneers of this <laughs> and um, it absolutely changed the way that we work. So That's incredible. You know, it is so simple, but like just a different way of looking at things and changing exactly. our mindset. Look at what it can do. Totally. Mm. So it's a perfect example of exactly why we need this technology in schools mm. because everybody at this point is going to be using something like Slack or Teams when they go to the office. And the entire point of higher education is to prepare you for the workforce. It's to set you up to thrive in whatever career you choose. And now we need to adjust for our current new norm, Mm. which is remote and hybrid and a lot of stuff happening online. And I think students from a very young age need to start to be taught how to function properly online. Mm. The etiquette that you have to use, how to collaborate in teams virtually, how to solve problems virtually, that's a really important part of education that's going to need to adapt very quickly. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, wow, I can just see the possibilities with this. It's just incredible, you know, like. Totally. And I think it opens up a whole new way of learning for people who, you know, people who are anxious and they they don't even want, like you know, you said, don't even want to show up for a lecture or a class because exactly. they, since COVID now have a social anxiety, they don't want to be around so many people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like it allows them to engage without having exactly. that anxiety and to learn. Like, yes. Why have we it's not incredible. done this before? <laughs> exactly. No, I, that was exactly how I felt in that class. I thought this is such a no brainer. This mm. would truly change education at its fundamental core everywhere. And that is the first time we've, we would ever have such an upgrade in honestly 400 years. That's how long we've been using this traditional classroom model where teacher stands at the front, students face the teacher, and they just absorb this information. Mm. And it's actually called rote learning. Mm. And that is, you know, just the basic memorization of this is what the definition of something is. And then I can spit it back to you on a test. And apparently I've learned that concept. But we now know that meaningful learning is when you go one step further, when you're able to explain to someone why that is the definition, Mm. that's when you're really grasping a concept. And currently right now in classrooms around the world, we're doing rote learning. It's that basic high level, you know, tops of the trees. You're not really getting into the fundamentals. But I, for the last five years that we've been doing this, have been studying and trying to find what is the best way for human beings to learn? Because I'm seeing it happen inside of Nectar, right? I'm I'm seeing thousands of messages being sent in classes, students sitting up for hours talking about concepts with each other, 
And I'm like, well, I would, I would have never done that in class. Like, why are you all so excited to learn? And I'm observing this for years thinking, I've got to figure out the explanation of why is this such a different learning experience? Something is clearly happening here that doesn't happen in a normal classroom. What is the explanation? And after years of searching for, you know, the best way to learn and what was happening inside of Nectar, I figured out they were one and the same. And it's something called the protege effect. The protege effect is a psychological phenomenon where, and this applies to anyone, so whether you're in school or not, you can use this, but it's a psychological phenomenon where when we are learning something, if we have the expectation set upon us that we might need to teach this concept to someone else after we're done learning it, we immediately go from rote learning to meaningful learning automatically without even consciously trying to. Because when you set the expectation or when you think, oh, I might need to teach this to one of my peers after I've learned it, your brain automatically starts to think of it in a much deeper way. Because you know when you have to teach someone, you can't just know the definition. You have to be able to say, this is why that's the definition. Mm. Because that's our favorite question to ask, why? Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what's happening inside of Nectar. Simply by existing in this classroom community where you know you have to ask and answer each other's questions, students have this expectation placed upon them that in order to participate in this community, you've got to know the material Mm. because the whole point is to be able to answer someone else's question or to just jump into the discussion, to even be able to send another message back and say, yeah, I totally agree with that concept. In order to do that, in order to participate, You've got to know the material deeply enough to be able to teach it back to one of your peers. That is the reply. That's how you chat back. So that is what's happening inside of Nectar. It's the protege effect instilled in real time. And that is how we transform the learning experience to make sure that every student is doing meaningful learning in every class. Yeah. And I mean, there's so like, yeah, I'm just, my mind is just reeling with the benefits of of, of <laughs> this, you know, like um, the retention of information because they can access it anytime, anywhere. Yes, exactly. Um, and it, they, they can't forget it because they can just go back and search. They can totally. go and ask someone, where was this? When did we do that? Like, Exactly. You know, the longer that yeah. nectar exists in a class, the more it becomes this repository of information. Mm. So by the time you get to the midterm or the final, the students can actually just study from each other's messages. Mm. They can type in a keyword and search through all of the messages that have that. And there you go. There's your study guide. It's and just if you a have big a question library. Ask, yeah. Exactly. You got a yeah. question after you read something? That's fine. Reply right back to that message and ask that person, hey, what did you mean when you said yeah. that? And you get a response in five minutes. Wow. Wow. But, yep. you know, it gives students the opportunity to be seen as yes. well. Regardless exactly. of where they are and how yes. many students are in that class. It evens the to playing be field for everyone. Mm. And that, for me, being someone who is autistic and has never felt safe in a classroom, that's the game changer for me. That whether or not you're able to, you know, speak the language properly, whether or not you feel comfortable sharing your thoughts in front of everyone, This evens the playing field so that everybody is able to add value to their education in the way that feels most comfortable to them. This is how we make the classroom truly and actually accessible to everyone. So, Kev, I'm seeing this opening doors for developing countries as well. If we can get internet and computers to them, they can learn anywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And they don't have to have a school. They don't have to have a classroom. Exactly. Exactly. That is sort of the big picture goal of Nectar. When we started this and we realized how well this was working, we saw this opportunity to first, you know, put this into every single classroom across the world and make existing classrooms accessible to all of the students, but then start to push the boundaries of the way we think about school and specifically college and university today. It doesn't have to be this physical building that you go to anymore. And COVID has shown us that. Mm. So this is how 
we take education and make it available to every corner of the world. We make it online and we make it centered around the human connection. If you look at the blue zones of the world, right, where people live the longest, one of the things that they say is is part of their recipe to success is the luxury of connection. Mm. They say that is the true luxury in life, to be able to connect with other human beings. That is what elongates your life. It's what keeps you happy and satisfied and fulfilled. And especially with the rise of AI Mm. and everything being remote, I think we're being pulled further and further apart more than ever before. Mm. And so I see it as, you know, someone who has VC money and is building the future and is in this space in the world where I get to decide what the future looks like, I have a social responsibility to build tools that refocus our attention on human connection rather than drive us further away from it. I could build AI into this and make it so that you never have to ask a question again. Mm -hmm. AI and Nectar just tells you exactly what you need to know. But that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point isn't to just get the answer. The point is to build a connection and learn through that human connection, through that community that you're now a part of. That is what we need. That's what the future looks like. It's centered around community. My gosh, I wish everyone had the same mindset as you, really. Thank you. I wish they did because this this is how we change the world. It really is. Yeah, and, I think so. You know, aside from that, like what what's your next big goal? Like what's what's next on the horizon? So you've got Santa Barbara online. Mm-hmm. What's next? Yeah, we've got over 40,000 students and teachers and admin using Nectar around the world today. And um, about a year ago, once we knew we had figured it out at one campus and we knew we could go scale this process again and again, My co-founder and I went and raised our first round of VC money from investors. So it was just me and him at the time, Jordan and I. And exactly a year ago, we went and raised a little over $2 million to scale out our team and start putting this in every campus everywhere. So now we are eight people strong with 15, including our part-time. And like I said, over 40,000 students using it at over 40 campuses And the goal is to put Nectar in every single classroom across the world. And I know it sounds like the impossible, but I truly believe that I got lucky and found my purpose in life very early on. I'm 26 and I have the energy, the hunger, the drive, and the knowledge of how to go change education across the globe. And I feel like If I've been given the ability to see the light at the end of the tunnel, I know how to get there. I know the right words to say, how to go raise the money, how to build the business, how to build the right product, and whose hands to put it in. It's my responsibility to use those gifts that I've been given for good. And so I know that I won't stop until I have put Nectar into every single classroom, K through 12, higher education, continuing education, every single student across the world deserves access to this in their classes. So that's the goal. And that's what I'm going to go do. Well, that is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I reckon I reckon you are going to hit it, my friend, because thank you. the determination you've gotten, how far you've come already, that is incredible. Um, so I can't so wait to see how far this thing spreads because the impact it's going to have is huge, absolutely, absolutely. huge. Um, now, Kev, if people want to find out more about Nectar and, and get mm-hmm. in touch, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. The best thing to do is to find us online at nectar.io. That's N-E-C-T-I-R dot I-O. Mm-hmm. And we will get you started. If you're a teacher, we'll get you started for free at your campus. If you're an admin, we'd love to get started for your whole campus right away. And we actually fly out to your school wherever you are and get your whole faculty and staff set up for you. Wow. So I actually just got back from Arkansas yesterday from setting up a new campus. And wow. so it's a really powerful grassroots movement that we're doing. And it's going to only work through community. And I know that doesn't sound super scalable, but I think this is the best way to build an ethical business. Mm. And so that's what I'm doing. 
And so you can find us, like I said, on our website. You can also find me on Medium or at my website, Kavita.com. And that's where you can find me and my thoughts. Amazing. Now, last big question for you. And Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say next, but Mm -hmm. what's the change you'd like to see in the world and how can we bring it to life? Ooh, that is a big one. Obviously, I think the easy answer is I'd love to see us push towards a more modern and accessible education. But I think on a more human level, what I'd really love to see is an increase in our self-awareness. I think that when I look back to how I've come so far in life so early and why I'm able to build products that people need and love that change their life. It's because I focus almost entirely on building my own self-awareness. I split my work day into not just sitting in front of a computer and answering emails, but also spending a good chunk of time every single day focusing on myself Mm. because you can only see others as deeply as you see yourself. And I think that in my experience of focusing a significant amount of my time and energy into discovering myself, that is what has allowed me to connect to others more deeply, to foster community more easily with people around me. And I think we could all be better off with having a deeper level of connection to ourselves and to those around us. So whether it's through meditation or through exercise or through mindful eating, practice increasing your level of self-awareness and watch how the world around you changes and flows towards you in a way that it never has before. Mm, Yeah, I could not agree more. Um, and that's a conversation I've been having with a lot of people lately is, you know, there's so many people living a life, but they're not in it. Yes, exactly. They're not in it. So it's time to jump in and, and be the change. And I can't Absolutely. thank you enough, Kev, for being a part of the ethical evolution. Thank you so much for having me, Bindi. This was an amazing conversation, made my day. So thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for listening to the Ethical Evolution Podcast. If you're ready to be the change and would love to work with me on finding your voice through spiritual coaching or creating your own podcast with impact, visit ethicalchangeagency.com. Introducing the Deep Leadership Podcast. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former submarine officer who spent 22 years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Deep Leadership is real-world, actionable leadership advice from John and his expert guests. Become a leader worth following. Subscribe today. Electric acid. All right, all right, all right. Welcome. Fitness. Hosted by yours truly, Rich LaMonica. We invite experts from many fields, from authors to entrepreneurs, to share their journeys with the Misfit Nation and a space for fellow veterans to share their stories through our Warrior Wednesday initiative. The show was born from veterans, but has evolved into a living, breathing 